former Panthers quarterback Jake DeLome joining me on uh, the occasion of Jerry Richardson's passing, former team owner, founding owner of the Carolina Panthers. Jake, thanks for doing this on short notice. You know, I, I guess your your initial reactions to hearing the news today. Well, certainly it's um, it's heartbreaking, you know, but uh, I do know he wasn't in the best of health. And um, listen, Mr. Richardson, he lived he lived a good life. He was he lived a good age and uh, very lucky. I know he had the heart transplant in 2009 and certainly that has uh, been able to extend his life. And uh, I think the thing that I think about, you think about the family, Miss Roslyn and, um, you know, the, the, the two surviving kids and, and Mark and Ashley, but uh and all the grandkids that, that I've got to know. and But just the good times that we had in Carolina um, at the facility, uh, being around him, the team, how he wanted the team to be, and uh, all the different people that worked there. And it, it truly was like a family-type atmosphere. And, uh, you know, what he was able to accomplish. It's uh, Yes, it's a very sad day. Uh, but in essence, you know, I, I think of all the great times um, that he was able to provide not only for me and my family, but so many other people in Carolina, and not just the football players, everyone associated with the Carolina Panther organization. He was a former pro football player himself. Uh, I, I wonder, going back to when you came to Carolina, how much did he have to do with that? You know, Did you have conversations with him leading up to that? What, what were your first experiences with him like? Well, to be honest, I, I think the biggest thing, one – you looked at him different because he was an owner that that actually played the game and certainly was an imposing individual. He wasn't um, uh, someone of small in stature. He was an imposing man and um, always dressed very well and was very stoic and um, just he treated people with class and dignity. And that's how he wanted everybody in the organization to be treated. Uh, but, you know, my early interactions with him more, I guess you could say in, in awe, so to speak. And, I think the thing that maybe I respected and enjoyed so much about him, he, he wasn't a meddling owner. You don't, you never mm -hmm. saw him doing interviews uh, after games. You never saw him constantly in the locker room and, and things like that. Um, he let the coaches coach. He let the, uh, the front office people do their job. And he wasn't, he wanted certain players on the football team to be a certain way. Uh, but he was just, Things were done right. I, I don't know if there's any other way to say it. Just things were done right in that organization. At least I know when my time was there. And that's what I thoroughly enjoyed about it. Not a meddling owner, not in the locker room, but certainly on that golf cart uh, practice and before <laughs> games. Do you ever sit down with him? And, and what were your conversations with him like when he was out of practice? Well, listen, he was a um, – you developed a relationship. Not only – yes, he was your boss, so to speak. He owned the team. But he got to know you a little bit deeper. And uh, – when, when guys went sit on the golf cart, certainly they, they, they were going to be ribbed by the other players because that's just kind of the way it was. But he was just a, a man that just wanted to make sure things were done the right way. And um, he just – he would lend his expertise and ear to players, not only – more so outside of football. I think that was one of the bigger, biggest things is that he really wanted to help his players outside of football and, and make them be – um, just good human beings and good people, especially after football. And he loved the NFL. He respected that shield. I know that's been talked about um, for many years. I mean, the Panther logo was the NFL shield. That's something that he respected. And, uh, and, and he tried to adhere by all the principles. I just happened to, to pick through some video of him. And I saw a moment between you and he before a playoff game in Chicago, I believe in 2008, I'm sure that was a fleeting moment, unless you remember exactly what that moment with him was about on the field. Um, you know, <laughs> what kind of support did he give you as a player, though? Listen, I can tell you every conversation we had before every <laughs> game because it was the exact same thing. Um, he would always do that. He would always go to the different position groups and shake some a few guys' hands, and he always started with the offensive linemen. That's what he always felt was the most important. He'd always kind of start there, and he'd make his way, and – there was things vividly, I know for me, I, he would always go talk to Moose and then always Steve Smith, and he would always kiss Steve on top of the head. And that was something that you just remember seeing. And then he'd come up to me, and whatever jersey color we were wearing that day, he would shake my hand and he'd say, good luck. He said, remember, let's say we're wearing white. We're wearing white jerseys today, okay? <laughs> the other team is wearing black. Don't throw it to the other team. I mean, that was just him. That was just his way of, you know, um, I guess breaking the ice, certainly as a player, 
I don't want to say nerves, but you're fired up, you're ready to ready to play. And that was just his way of, of being like, hey, this this is truly a kid's game. And, and we're on the highest stage. Let's enjoy it and uh, let's do the right thing. Were you able to to keep up with him, keep in touch with him even after you played and, and after, you know, he, he sold the team? Not quite as much. Um, certainly after I played, kept up with him. Uh, less since the team has been sold. There has been uh, some communication, but I think communication got a little bit difficult, you know, yeah. in, in, in recent year or so with Mr. Richardson. Kept up more so with Charlie Dayton, longtime PR director, yep. who still saw him a decent amount. Um, I know Luke Keekley would see him. I don't live in Charlotte, so I think yeah. that was the hard part. Um, and then one of his grandsons I was pretty good friends with, and I would stay in touch with him, and he would kind of keep me abreast. And uh, one of his secretaries I'd get emails every now and then from. But uh, I do know there was some declining health in, in you know recent year or so with him. And, uh, you know, it's um, certainly a tough day, but I'm trying to look at it on the opposite end. I, um, I know I talked to Steve uh, Smith a little earlier today, and, I just uh, maybe I appreciate the fact that um, he was able to start the Carolina Panthers really and truly when that was a long shot to be able to start that franchise mm -hmm. in Charlotte and to grow it the way he did. And um, lucky enough to be a part of it and so many people, friends and and things like that, uh, that I met through the Panther organization all due to Mr. Richardson starting uh, the Carolina Panthers.